Yesterday was pretty much the coolest day ever for me. Um, if you saw the last video I did, the punchline uh, filler episode, I said that I was going to the Comic Arts Festival in Pittsburgh, which is where they held the Rubin Awards the night before. So, um, first things first, uh, the Rubin predictions. My Rubin predictions, who I voted for and who actually got it. Uh, the winner of the best newspaper comic strip was Red and Rover. I placed my vote for Zitz. And you know what? That's fine. Red and Rover is a good strip. I like it a lot, and uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Zitz is also good, but Red and Rover won this year, and I support the, uh, <laughs> the National Cartoon Society's decision on that one. Uh, best panel went to um, Rhymes with Orange, which... If you can't recall which one of the three panels that was, you, uh, it was the one that was sort of a sketchy, sort of shell, cell shaded style, and you might remember it and have it stand out in your mind a bit more if I utter the phrase floppy popsicle breasts, which was, uh, how I described some of the artistic styles in that. Um, not my personal choice, but again, like I said, any three of the panel comics could have walked away with it and felt utterly justified. And Cartoonist of the Year, they threw me for a loop. There are three candidates, so I thought, well, you can't have a tie, because, you know, there's three candidates, only one can win, and I put my vote down for uh, Rick Kirkman of Baby Blues. Rick Kirkman won the Rubin for uh, Cartoonist of the Year, and so did Brian Crane of Pickles. It was a tie, and both of those guys walked away with the Rubin on board. If I had uh, looked a little closer at the previous Rubin winners, it turns out that this has actually happened once before in 1968. Uh, I think it was 68. So... There is a precedent for this, and I'm so I'm batting uh, 0.5 now. I think it was what it is. I'm I'm one half for three. So uh, I don't know the percentages. I don't know the fraction of that. But I'm out of my three po possible choices. I was half right on one of them. So better luck next year. Maybe I'll uh, do better next time around. Okay. Now that that's out of the way. Um. I went down to the Comic Arts Festival and there were a bunch of cartoonists there who, uh, a bunch of them whose uh, scripts I've covered and some guys who I haven't and I'm going to, and I took video of the event. And so uh, the video is what's going to play now. It's pretty long. It's about 25 minutes to a half hour. And I admit that uh, the audio is not the best. There, was, there were a lot of people talking and my, my microphone tended to pick up pretty much everything. I. I'm putting subtitles in those videos so you can uh, see what's going on and maybe hear it a little bit better. If you'd rather not have to deal with all that background noise, you can just go right here to this time here, and I will tell you about everything that happened um, in the vlog here on set. Um, and also, if you'd rather just skip all that and, and just go to uh, my personal thoughts about what happened in the day and see some of the stuff I got, then you can go to this time here and I'll show you everything I got at the uh, Comic Arts Festival. So, hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you in about a half hour when that's done. Hey there, everybody. Uh, made the trip from Cleveland down to Pittsburgh. Um, just walking down the Tunze to the uh, Tunzeum right now, which is where the Comic Arts Festival is happening. I drove by there earlier. They've actually got the street uh, blocked off. A whole bunch of tents outside. Can't recognize anybody from here, but uh, I've got a bunch of books with me that I'm hoping I can get signed for cheap. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Best of luck. Okay, so this is the right place for all the cartoons. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the sign's wrong there, but the sign over there says that Bill Watterson's here, which I doubt because if he was here, this place would be jacked and I'd be crushed to during a stampede right now. But going around here, we got guys from Bunny Google. We have uh, Bunny Hoas of the Lockhorns. You know, I didn't like all these comic strips, but it's still kind of cool to meet the creators behind them. And pray they don't notice me or know who I am. So it uh, might be interesting here. Yeah, take a look. Yeah, I miss some of this stuff. Okay, those are okay. Miss Pickle. 
Charles, gosh darn it. Yes, sir. I know your face, but I can't remember your name. My name's uh, Mr. Kirkman. I'm Jerry Scott. Jerry Scott, hi. John I, Weber, good to, John, nice to right. meet you. Yeah. I actually brought um, a book for you. I was going to give you, because I, I looked at the, some of your reviews. They were very yeah, kind, yeah. And, and, I, and I left it at the hotel. Thanks, so. oh, I, do you have any contact info on the uh, or do any other calls? Yes, I do. I have my card right here. I live, I live over in Cleveland, actually. So. Okay, cool. I'll send it to you. We just, are, we just uh, Jim and I just came out with our first novel, Illustrated Sets yeah. Novel. Yeah, I and, saw uh, uh, that on the uh, on Daily Inc. and on yeah. their uh, website, yeah. So I'll send you one of those or, or, or a collection yeah, book or something. But enjoy your uh, website and your reviews. Thank you very much. Very good to watch. It's, uh, you're not signing, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were going to be here. I, I knew uh, Mr. Kirkman was going to be here. Yeah, yeah Rick, uh, Rick was here. So happy last night. He won the Rick Award. Oh, and, I was there uh, too. Right? It was amazing. My predictions were a little off, I guess, to this. Oh ah, nice. Is he you're going to be here for him to sign that? Today? I know. I just nail off. Look at that. Oh, man. Oh, well. You know what? There are worse things in life. First, and then he can do the personal thing for you when he goes here. He will sign you. Oh, I, I was going not to bring you My Zitz books. Uh, I don't have a Zitz one, but I have this old one. Oh man, the, old, the original baby blue. This, this was from the very first episode of the show I did, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's that's Which our is first book, 19, like, 90, 1990. 1990, yeah. Can I get your autograph sure. too? Thank you so much. Yeah, sign this up for you too. Uh, oh, I will. That's why I brought it. Oh, thank you so much. It is so kind of you. I was an idiot for not having the camera running this whole time, so I'm just going to leave it running, because Jerry Scott, the writer of uh, Baby Blues and Zits, uh, I just got his autograph, and he actually came up to me and like tapped me on the shoulder and said, do I know you? You look familiar. You're, you're on the show, right? And I go, yeah. You. So uh, I'm going to totally geek out about this later when I'm out in public and embarrass myself, but yeah, Jerry Scott came up to me and recognized me. Uh, that makes today a good day. I love your courage. Thank you so Mr. much. Mr. Boardman. Suzanne. You know this John guy? Weber on the comic strip critic on YouTube. Or? Wait, okay, no wait a minute. Show you know. me how to make it go. It's it's already going. It's oh, already it's going? Yeah, it's already going. Right Red dot. Right okay. Get closer. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> wait. Ah, okay. That's that's a video game. That's a video game. It's already recording. <laughs> I wish you could least move or something. Uh, yeah. Get them closer together. I don't have a plan on meeting you. I got a pen. I know. I feel 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 sort of stuck together kind of yeah it's kind of a pickle shape isn't it like yeah yeah that's pretty good actually okay and I'll, I'll, sign, I'll sign my name I should sign yeah. Rick. Oh, the, oh there's plenty of room there for Rick would be Rick would be mortified I will I, I will tell him uh, to make sure you sign
here when I was less than a year old, so I don't remember any of it. Yep, that's why I, I was born in uh, Philadelphia for nine oh, months, and I moved to Arizona. Oh, okay. Stuff like that. I haven't been to Arizona, but the pictures and everything there, it's gorgeous. Uh-huh. Do any big plans for Family Circus in the future? Is this one your favorite character? Uh, hopefully just maintaining its quality, I guess. Okay. I grew up, you know, wanting to be new, uh, no, he's been around from uh, early, early days. So you go up to Comic-Con or no? You, no, or not yet. Said, I oh. haven't been. I, I hope to one of these years. I run a show on YouTube about newspaper comics. Really? Yeah. So I I hesitate to use such a you know lofty comparison, but uh -huh. you know, like kind of like what Ebert and Siskel were to movies. I sort of compare myself to in like the same sort of function. I'm, an, I'm a really? comic strip critic. So. Oh. So who, who have you talked to, or do you just talk talk into? The, into oh, I just talk. I just talk into the. Uh, it, it's, it's just a solo act by myself. I like, do you just do you analyze the cartoons uh, of the day, or a, a I, I do cartoon? most mostly modern cartoons. Not not. I do like take a look at a, at a different right. comic every yeah. episode. Yeah. So. I haven't gotten around to Phantom Circus yet. So. Should I wear it? No. <laughs> Uh, nah. <laughs> it's kind of one of the newer cartoons, so you're giving it some time to, yeah. to get it to catch yeah, its stride. Absolutely. we got to see how this oh, family hey, hey. turns out. I, I got hooked into uh, filming for this young man. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Um, uh, but it's nice because I've discovered some new strips that otherwise uh, my uh, paper doesn't carry. I've never right. read I right. haven't seen Leo before, haven't seen Retail oh. before. So. Oh, well, that's cool. What paper do you get? The uh, Plain Dealer up in Cleveland. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh. They sack for about five months. Oh, uh -huh. and, then, and then they stop. I, I got so. stories about the Plain Dealer. Do, um, yeah. to what, how do you spell your name? John with an H. Yeah. And Is something you like this? Uh, uh, heavy paper. Good news is I can redecorate my set a little bit. I've been having I had a I've had a Watchman poster on my door since day one. Oh yeah, wrong. Good, good work. Wrong industry. Yeah. Okay, there you go. 
That is fantastic. Oh. <laughs> okay, so am I? I'm the last one. Oh my gosh! It's the comic critic. Comic yeah. critic. Yeah. Comic yeah. critic. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Thank you. It's I the the comic, comic critic. Wow. Oh, you're like absolutely. Mark, it's the reason I have to come down. Oh show. my gosh! <laughs> if I just the comic critic. I've watched you so many times on TV. I'm like, oh, I, I don't think so much on that and commenting on the Facebook page and everything. It was, it was yeah, you know what? I've commented on a lot of times and it just has a sticker. I, now that I'm a, um, I switched my page over to a fan page so I can't comment anymore. They don't have to comment on. So I believe you I'd have, I think I have to comment on the last Ruben's predictions. Okay. We were pretty close. We were halfway. I got, I got, for Cartoonist, I already got one or two. I don't think they did ties with the Ruben award. Only one time they did in, in the past. Okay. Oh, they have? Well, um, your name is John, right? Yeah, John Penace. When did they do the past? 1960-something. You, know, you know who it was? Um, wait, I get it. It was... Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. It's okay. Yeah, you can probably find it out in two seconds. Actually, it's probably on The Daily Cartoonist. I know you do. Much, much more research than a lot of reporters that have interviewed me and don't say, so what comic book do you do? Uh, yeah. and, um, That's what was interesting us. People go, oh, so you do like comic books? And I go, no, no, there's a difference. Yeah. I don't let people get that. Oh, they're just cartoons. They're just cartoons. <laughs> I like how you made your, um, your font a character. Yeah, that was something that I, uh, I was from. If I could, I would, I would get my little brother on just kind of face like a robber. <laughs> well, who's the people with the guns all the time? Uh, Austrian characters in the Hoover movement. Who's my parents? <laughs> I think Johnny Hart um, may have tied with somebody. Look, uh, you know, the, you know, the I think he, I think Oh, okay. Yeah, I did already. Is it so hard? You guys are 
and they made so many mistakes on it. Yeah, well, I was trying to think who the like short little stubby legs and the black pants remind me of, and I go Calvin. Calvin. A lot of people say that, and, and I, there's no, not intentional. Anything. I know it's uh, Jeff Malley gets a gets compared to Calvin and Hobbes as a work on Fries a lot. They launched Edison just as Fox. You know, Fox oh yeah, I love Fox. Yeah, he quit. So he went to Edison Edison daily right in 2006, seven. Yeah, yeah. Weekly, so yeah. And uh, so we picked up a bunch of his good faces. That works. He's team tied it like that, so that works out pretty well. Are you saying you and everyone else attended this festival today?
Dan Pararo of Bizarro, Chris Sparks, who's on, uh, he doesn't do Colossite, but he's a part of Team Colossac, which is raising money for Parkinson's. A lot of cool people around here, too, so... Yeah, I'd say this, this was a very successful day, and I'll, uh, full write-up on the vlog when I get back. If you're watching this right now, then that probably means you just got finished watching all the video from the Comics Arts Festival. If you'd rather skip me talking about what you just saw, then click this button right here and I'll show you everything I got from everybody that you saw in the video and just talk a little bit about what happened during uh, the day and my own personal thoughts about what happened afterwards. So click this here to skip my ranting about everybody I met for the next 20 minutes or so. I honestly can't believe that what happened to me down in Pittsburgh actually happened. Um, I got there a little later than I was hoping to get down there, so I missed talking to Brian Crane of Pickles and um, Greg Evans, who does Luann. Um, I was hoping to talk to both of them, especially Brian Crane, since he was one of the, uh, w the cartoonists of the year who won that award, but he was uh, signing stuff from 11 to 12, and I got there at about 12.05, so I missed him. Um, so I got there, and there were some guys around, and I got in line to see uh, Jeff Keane, who does Family Circus. And I was standing there in line, and I was talking to this woman uh, either in, fr in front of me, and all of a sudden there's a tap on my shoulder. And I turn around, and there's this, uh, this middle-aged, uh, salt-and-pepper-haired man standing there, and it's Jerry Scott! It's the writer for Baby Blues and Zits, and he comes up to me and says, I, I think I, I recognize your face. I don't remember your name. Are you, uh, are you the, the comic strip guy on YouTube, the, the critic? And I go, yeah. And I, uh, and this is where it gets a little, a little embarrassing for me, is I accidentally thought he was Rick Kirkman at first, but he was totally cool with it. And he came up to me, and he recognized me. And, uh... I was there and I chatted with him for a minute, and Jim Borgman was also there, who is the uh, artist for Zitz, and they were there with both their wives. And so if you watch the video, when I'm talking to Jim Borgman and he's drawing a sketch for me, that's actually Mrs. Scott holding the camera for me. And so when I, and I talk with them a little bit, and uh, then when I was done talking to them and got their autographs and a sketch uh, from them, uh, Jim Borgman's wife, who actually goes by Suzanne Soled, I wanted to make sure I got that right, um, she just handed me her bag that she got at the Rubin Awards that's just full of sweat. You can, it's kind of hard to see in the black and blue, though, but it's got the National Cartoon Society's label on the Rubin Awards, and, and it's got all this stuff in here, which I'll, which I'll show you in a little bit. And she just handed it to me, so I... I'm still blown away, like, 24 hours later. I... All of you guys, thank you so, so much. You made not just my day, but my whole year by coming up to me and recognizing me. And I, I, I'm floored, honestly. I, I uh, it's, it's incredibly awesome and in incredibly humbling to know that you guys watch and enjoy and share my videos. Um, thank you. Um, when I was when I was done talking to to Mr. Scott and Mr. Borgman and and their wives, I went up and I talked to Jeff Keen. I got a sketch of Jeffy from Family Circus, and then at the next table over, Mark Tatuli from Leo sits down. And so when I'm done talking to Jeff Keen, I get in line to talk to Mark Tatuli, and I get to the front of the line, and he looks up at me, and his face lights up, and he practically shouts, "Oh my gosh, it's the comic critic!" And he recognized me. Apparently, he's been watching a lot of the videos I've been putting up and trying to comment on them. And I was actually talking to one of my, uh, my friends who's also really tech savvy, and he said, um, if you're watching this and you're trying to comment, Mr. Tutuli or anybody, if you're running Adblock or Adblock Plus, um, apparently what that does is, yes, it keeps you from watching ads, but it also... Uh, prevents you from commenting sometimes and also uh, doesn't count towards my my uh, view count down there in the corner so uh, if you disable ad block to comment uh, you know that's how you do that and also I just appreciate if you disable ad block so I can see get an accurate count of how many views I'm getting um, 
So Mark Dottulli recognized me. He sketched me a really awesome drawing of Leo, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and I had a, a great time talking to him. It was great to see him, and I want to thank him also for, for watching the show all the time, because he said he's been watching a lot of episodes. So that's so incredibly awesome. I met Greg Walker, who does Beetle Bailey, so I got a sketch of Otto the Dog from that. Uh, that was cool. I wanted to go to the Women in Cartooning panel, because there was a panel about uh, women who are doing uh, newspaper comics. Uh, I can't remember everyone who was there off the top of my head, because because I, I didn't go. I, it was 125 bucks, and I couldn't afford it, and I would have not gotten to meet some of the other guys. But Kathy Geiswhite, who does or did Kathy, was there. Um, Terry Libinson, who does The Pajama Diaries, was there. And I didn't get to see any of those guys, but maybe I will in the future because Terry Limson actually lives not far from me. She can't be any more than 45, 50 minutes away, so who knows? Maybe in the future I'll uh, get to talk to her when I get around to doing the pajama diaries. We'll see. Um, and who else was there? Um, uh, Dan Peraro, who does Bizarro, was there. I didn't get the chance to actually talk to him or get a sketch from him uh, because he had a line that was about like 100 feet long. Uh, so getting in line to, for that would have been probably a two hour wait and he was only signed up for an hour anyways I don't know if everyone even got a sketch but he was there and for the record he has the most amazing mustache ever he curls at the tip and waxes it and it's, it's amazing mustache um, John Hambrock was there and he does a strip called The Brilliant Mind of Edison Lee which I haven't gotten to yet it's a pretty recent strip Apparently, it replaced a Foxtrot in a lot of papers when Foxtrot stopped doing daily strips in 2006. The brilliant mind of Edison Lee sort of stepped up to the plate and took over. And it's a pretty good strip. I'll give it a full review sometime. Um, and then I also met Rick Kirkman of Baby Blues, who was looking forward to me because when I did my Cartoonist of the Year video, he, uh, I sent it to him and he replied back saying, yeah, I saw it actually the day before you sent me the email, which also just just blew my mind the fact that you know so many of the cartoonists that I talk about um, watch my videos without me having to send it to them knowing that they come back and, and they watch this it's 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 so cool um, to know that so I had, I had a great time at the comic arts festival I met so many guys I had such a great time. So many people recognized me. That was that was the thing that, that, that blew my mind more than anything else. I was kind of expecting to go down and talk to Rick Kirkman for a minute or two and maybe have, you know, like Mark Tatuli say, oh yeah, I, I remember you, you did that, uh, that video last year. But yeah, no, they, they saw me and they were, they were, you, you were all thrilled to see me and it's, it was amazing. I, I want to thank you so much for making that probably the best day I'll have this year. Um, it, it, it really is, words really can't describe just how amazing it was. If you, if you had told me when I got up that morning, Jerry Scott's going to come up to you and talk to you. He's going to, he's going to recognize you and come up and talk to you. I wouldn't have believed you. I would not have believed you. Um, but it happened. And it, it, it's so cool, but it's also a little humbling to, to know that, you know, the guys who I'm talking about are watching, and also a little scary, because, you know, how many of you are watching? Because I forgot to mention that Bunny Hoist, who does the Lockhorns, was also there. And I admit, I was kind of, you know, scared to talk to her, because you know, I, I wasn't particularly kind to Lockhorns. So it's, it's sort of interesting now to wonder, if, if these guys watch The Punchline, do they watch all the episodes of The Punchline that I do? Um, so nothing's going to change going out, but perhaps, you know, it, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what sort of response I get when I, when I do a negative review of a comic from time to time. Um, but the Comic Arts Festival, met Jerry Scott, met Jim Borgman, met Mrs. Scott and Mrs. Uh, oh, I feel terrible for not remembering, and Mrs. Soled. Met Mark Tooley, met Rick Kirkman. Uh, oh, I can't remember his name, but um, Chris Sparks, who was uh, who also helped with the artwork for Cul de Sac when uh, Richard Thompson stepped down. He was there. He wasn't signing anything. He wasn't doing any sketches, so I didn't get anything from him. But he was there. I talked to him for a minute. Um, 
I also had a brief moment when I thought Bill Watterson was there. Because the name tag was, I was reading, everybody had a name tag, they had their name and the, the name of the strip they did. I was using the strip, but it was turned from the side, so it wasn't quite accurate. It was, I think, Bill Masterson, who's a um, cartoonist for The Simpsons. But for the side, I thought it said Bill Watterson, Calvin, and Hobbes. It wasn't, but uh, uh, it was the most amazing day. So, thank you guys so much. Um, and I got a bunch of cool artwork and stuff, too. So, let's start off with... Oh, what do I... I got two bags here. I'm not sure which one to start with. Let's start off with the bag that Mrs. Soled gave me. This is this was the bag that apparently from what I was led to believe, uh, from what I was told by Mrs. Soled, is this was, if you attended the Rubin Awards, which are invite only, it's a big black tie event, um, and it's in San Diego next year, so if you're out in San Diego and you wanna, you wanna see this thing, there's probably gonna be a festival like that out there next year too. So she gave me this, this, this messenger bag with all this stuff in it, and it's got, like I showed you earlier, got the 67th annual Rubin Awards on it, in the blue, uh, the seal of the National Cartoonist Society, and this other thing here, which is, I believe, a uh, it's a design manufacturing place, or it almost looks like a charity or sort of hospital logo. I'll have to look into it, I admit. And it's loaded with stuff, too. It's got pockets on the front for cards and pens and a smartphone. It's actually a super nice bag. And so inside, we have a, a shirt with the uh, NCS logo on it, which is super cool. You have to wear this in the punchline every once in a while. You don't see like many, aside from like, the big ones like Peanuts and Garfield, you don't see a whole lot of merchandise, uh, comic strip stuff in stores. Um, so you have to go online to find them, and they are online, but that's super cool to have. You're not gonna find that online. There's a old Hot Wheels car uh, with Sergeant Beetle Bailey on it. It's an old like a Beetle Bailey car. And there's other ones that apparently existed too, if you look in the back. There's uh, one from the Phantom, there's one from the Flash Gordon, there's one from Popeye, there's a few other ones. So maybe if I ever get into a collector spirit, I could try hunting some of those down. There's a, there's a Hager the Horrible Nomad Delivery, which is like the weirdest thing for me to imagine Hager driving. Um, so there's that. Uh, there's a refrigerator magnet, a couple guys gave me some flyers to advertise this stuff. There were vendors outside also hawking all their wares trying to sell stuff. And one guy had this amazing Wonder Woman print, which I just thought was super cool. So I picked that up and display that somewhere. That's a really nice sort of, kind of an anime-esque style. So uh, uh, good work from him. Uh, great to see that. The, uh, this is something that... As much as I am tempted to review it, I don't think I'll ever be able to. It's called The Naked Cartoonist. And from, I looked at it a little bit, and what it is is it's cartoonists who drew themselves um, uh, nude and in the buff. And it, I, I can't show you this stuff. I really can't. Not without getting in some serious trouble on you. Oh, wow, no, I can't, I can't show you this stuff. But uh, <laughs> I'm keeping this one. Uh, because this, this is funny, and maybe at some point, uh, I can talk about it, but not show you, which would be a very interesting video. Uh, there's a, there's a BC book here, and surprisingly, I actually really like these BC, stri uh, BC strips. Um, the ones that I did in my review, I wasn't a huge fan of, but maybe that was just a particularly bad run there that I watched, um, but these were actually, uh... These are actually all pretty good here. I like, I enjoyed these. So there's a BC book here. There's a Matt, there's a, an issue of Mad Magazine, and Tom Richardson is the current uh, head of the NCS. He was the cartoonist of the year last year. So uh, this is from April 2012 when he won the cartoonist of the year um, last year. So there's that, which I'll take a look at at some point. Oh, this is cool. This, there's a there's a get fuzzy treasury here and uh, Darby Conley wasn't there but there's this big old get fuzzy treasury which is going to go up on my shelf next to all my uh, Foxtrots and Calvin and Hobbes and everything so this is good get fuzzy is still really good this this stuff is just super super smart writing and it's just great to read um, great strip and there's also two calendars in here one is Chad Carpenter's Tundra 
which I admit is not a strip that I've heard of, but now I gotta be on the lookout for it. I'll give it a look at some time. Uh, it's a uh, 2014 calendar, so I got this for next year. And a 2013 BC calendar. So that'll go up on the wall. Um, I'm actually kind of glad I got all of this stuff, because as much as I love Watchmen, that's a comic book. That's a graphic novel, not a comic strip. So now I got some stuff to put up on the wall in place of Watchmen. Um, so that was all the stuff that I was given by Mrs. Soled, and I want to thank her so much. Honestly, I was floored. She just she just handed it to me and said, "Here, take this. You you'll enjoy this." And I couldn't believe it. Um, and also in this other bag here is a bunch of sketches and stuff I got in some of my books. Um, so. First off is uh, Jeffy from Family Circus, drawn by Jeff Keen. Uh, just a simple little drawing sketch there, Jeffy all happy and smiling. And it, it, it's really is kind of cool to see just how quickly characters like this get sketched out. I guess when you've been drawing them for, for decades, that's what happens, but it's just so cool. And then also from Jan, John uh, Hambrock, this is Edison from The Brilliant Mind of Edison Lee, which, like I said, is not a strip I've covered yet, but I'll get around to it soon. Um, hopefully this summer, actually. It's a good strip. And that's one of my goals in the punchline, is to share good strips with you and, and get them noticed more. Um, Beetle Bailey, this is an old book I had when they were raising some charity, and Greg Walker drew Otto, the dog, up there at the top for me. Again, a quick little sketch. And I was looking at it upside down when he was drawing it. So upside down for a while, I thought it was Sarge. I was wondering why he was coloring Sarge's nose in. Then he handed it to me and I went, oh, it's it's Otto. Okay, okay, okay. So I got Otto the dog there from Beetle Bailey. Um, oh, this was actually kind of cool. Uh, I mentioned that, that Jim Borg, I don't have a, a, a Zitz book. I don't have a book of, of Zitz, which it was kind of awkward when Jim Borgman, who's the Zitz artist, comes up and he and I don't have a Zitz book for him, but I do have Baby Blues, which he also kind of works on with Jerry Scott, so I gotta cover this up here. So he drew Daryl McPherson there in his style, and uh, you can see under my thumb here it says, "Hi Rick." Jim Borgman was one of the first guys I met, and he left there and it said, "Tell Rick that I drew that in for him." And you can see down there in the blue by my pinky, uh, Jerry Scott also signed that. That's so when I got to Rick Kirkman at the end of the day, and I told him that he goes, huh, nice, thanks, Jim. And so then he drew Del McPherson, and he said, hi, Jim. So, actually, now that I think about it, I wonder how many places, how many people have artwork with by both these guys on it on the same page. Um, I don't know how many. That, that actually might be... That actually might be something that's just kind of be cool to look at. So I got... All three of them signed by Jerry Scott and Rick Kirkman and Jim Borgman and artwork of Darren McPherson by both of those guys. So that's super, that, that's, that was super cool. Actually, Jerry Scott was also surprised because this was the very first Baby Blues book published. They just came out with a, a two uh, decades worth of Baby Blues, the best of collection, which is a big old hardbound uh, tome. And, you know, a bunch of people had that, but this... This was the first one. This was what I used in the first episode of the Punchline a year ago. And this is what I brought for him to sign. So he thought that was really cool. And then also, uh, Mark Tatuli, when he recognized me, this is, a book, this is a Leo book I won from Go Comics. And he saw me and he drew me a little sketch. He drew me a, actually a pretty big sketch of Leo there with the sign saying, the comic critic from Mark Tatuli to John. Best wishes. Which was so cool because I, I had... Adore Leo. It's almost embarrassing how much I love Leo. Because it's just such a fantastic strip. So I got that from them. I got the sketches. I got the bag of swag from Mrs. Soled. Um, I had a great time there. I saw so many people. I got. Uh, I, I wish I had more money, honestly, to go and buy some of the things that some people were, were selling. So there were some podcasts around. I got invited to go roller derbying with, uh, with some, uh, some roller derby girls. I can't make it because Pittsburgh's two hours away from me, and I got plans for that day also, but I want to thank you for inviting me. Uh, and I also should give credit to the guys who organized the whole event for the day, um, for the festival, which is the Tunesium in Pittsburgh. And I was there last year when Stefan Passes of Pearls Before Swine was talking. Um, I did that video right before I went on my month-long hiatus, 
but Joe Wass is the uh, director, I believe it is, of the Toonzeum there, and this is a man who is passionate about the medium, not just of comic strips, but of comics and cartooning as a whole. Everything from TV animation, computer animation, comic books, graphic novels, comic strips. The man loves the art, and it shows. He puts a whole lot of work into it. I, uh, I would have liked to have talked to him yesterday and sit down and talk with him a little bit about uh, his time working with all these cartoonists. He was completely busy running everything, which is completely and totally understandable. Some other time, I'm in Pittsburgh all the time because my grandparents are there. Uh, Mr. Wass, next time I'm out there, maybe I'll come by and uh, we can talk and shoot the breeze a little bit about uh, Tomic Sun. So that was a very long video about um, my incredibly awesome day yesterday at the Comic Arts Festival and my utterly inaccurate Ruben predictions. Congratulations to all of our guys who won. Thank you so much to everyone who uh, recognized me and talked to me and and like I said, it's it was just it's probably the coolest day I'm gonna have all year, unless uh, I can't think of an unless. Um, it was the coolest day that's gonna happen to me all year. Uh, thanks for watching. Another punchline coming up soon.